newest Google Pixel 5 leak reveals a very small battery for the 5G flagship. Samsung and Huawei have embraced massive batteries inside their premium smartphones, but Google has resisted. Why they have resisted, I don't know, money? Why, why are they resisting this? Why did they resist it on the Pixel 4? Why did they put such a paltry battery in there? The information shared by Jason C, reported by Android Headlines, which should be taken with a pinch of salt, points towards a 3,080 milliamp hour battery inside the Google Pixel 5. That increase will undoubtedly be welcomed by consumers, but it still falls ridiculously short of 4,000 and 5,000 milliamp hour battery capacities that are often attached to rival flagships and even some cheaper phones. So for sure, we're not going to see a 4,000 milliamp hour battery in the Pixel 5. We're, we're not going to get seven, eight, nine hours of screen on time because we're just not going to get that capacity to even get us close to that. Will we get four hours? Definitely. We're going to get four hours of screen on time. Will we get five? Will we get six? I think that is the bigger question there. Are we going to get those kind of screen on time hours? For me, if I can get five hours of screen on time, I would be okay with that. I won't be thrilled about it, but I'll be okay with five hours of consistent screen on time. I'm not talking about just a one-time thing when like I decide to like lay in bed the whole day and watch YouTube videos. I'm talking about real five hours of screen on time with mixed heavy usage, right? Being outside, using LTE, using Wi-Fi as well, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Consistent, consistent five hours of screen on time, consistent five and a half hours of screen on time. That that would make me happy if I can get at least five and a half hours of screen on time. The 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 thing to worry about here is the fact that yes, it's gonna be a Snapdragon 765G chipset. So it's gonna be a far less powerful processor. But we're also talking about most likely the possibility of a higher refresh rate. And a higher refresh rate usually means more battery usage, more battery drainage. So is five hours going to be realistic with a 3,000 milliamp hour battery on a Pixel 5? Maybe. Is six hours? I don't know. I really don't know. There are rumors of a larger OLED display. Some sources claim it will feature a 5.8 inch display, something that was seemingly corroborated by an official Pixel 5 marketing shot, while others say the flagship boasts a 6.7 inch display. All right, first of all, 6.7 inch display with a 3080 milliamp hour battery makes zero sense. That, that makes zero sense at all. Maybe a 6.7 inch display for a Pixel 5 XL, but there is no way in hell that you're gonna see a 6.7 inch display with a 3080 milliamp hour battery. If, if, if that was to happen, Google would get shat on all day. There is no way Google would allow, well, I don't, I don't know. Google seems to allow whatever they want, even if it's not a uh, popular opinion, so. Who knows? When I first saw this article or first heard that they were going to be putting a 3,080 milliamp hour battery, 3,000 milliamp hours, let's, let's be fair. That's really what they're putting in there. So a 3,000 milliamp hour battery in the Pixel 5, I was like, well, it'll be okay because it's going to have a Snapdragon 765G chipset. It's not going to have a Snapdragon 800 chipset. It's not going to eat battery as bad, but I totally forgot about okay, yes, 5G is going to eat up some battery. A 90 hertz refresh rate is going to eat up some battery. God forbid they put a 120 hertz refresh rate. That's going to eat more battery. If it's not going to be FHD+, plus, if it's going to be 1440p, if it's going to be quad HD plus display, that's obviously going to eat a lot more battery. How well is this Pixel 5 going to do when it comes to battery life? This if this is the case, this is going to deter a lot of people from buying the Pixel 5. It's the same reason that I have a hard time recommending the Pixel 4 because of its battery life. I have gotten, okay, let me, let, if, if you guys have seen, I put a video out testing the battery for like a week. And there were days I got six hours, six, six ish hours on my Pixel 4. But that was with turning a lot of shit off. I turned off 
digital well-being. I turned off always on display. I turned off the solely radar chip. I turned off, what else did I turn off? A number of other things. But, um, and that was a one-time thing, maybe a two-time thing. But other times I was getting around four hours of screen on time, sometimes less. And to know that I was getting less screen on time with turning all those things off as well, how could I recommend that? That's a very hard recommend for me. I, um, and, and so it makes me a little leery of the Pixel 5 because if the battery life on the Pixel 5 is going to suffer, if it's going to be the same issue as the Pixel 4, Google didn't learn their lesson. How, 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 does, how, how, do you, how do you tell a company to get their shit together? Because you would have thought by the Pixel 4, well, I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe miraculously, the Pixel 5 is going to come out. It's going to have insane battery technology. Everyone's going to get five and a half to six hours of screen on time on average, and the world will be a better place for it. But I, I can only be so optimistic, and I feel like I just don't know how realistic that's going to be with a 3,080 milliamp hour battery. Maybe the Pixel 5 XL will be the better choice, but at what price is the Pixel 5 XL going to be coming out for? Can you imagine, guys? Can you imagine the Pixel 5 XL selling at $800 with a Snapdragon 765G chipset? That's almost ridiculous to think that a seven a a 700... It's almost ridiculous to think that a Snap 765G chipset would sell at $800. That's what the Pixel 4 sells at. And that that this shit's already overpriced, even with an 855 chipset in it. Maybe the Pixel 4 A 5G is really the phone to get. Like overall, if you want something that's a little faster than the 4A, if you're looking for something with a bigger battery, a bigger display, maybe the 4A 5G is really the best phone to get in the Pixel lineup for 2020, but I could be wrong.